It's time now for your weekly fishing reports and real-time outdoor news. This is the Southwest Outdoors Report. Hello everyone, I cannot believe that we are this deep into the 2012 fishing season here on the show and I have not yet done any crappie fishing. Well, on today's show in the next half hour, I'm going to fix that and we are going to be introducing to you for the very first time, my first attempt at a form of fishing that was invented for crappie over in the southeastern part of the United States. It was invented in Georgia and Alabama and Tennessee for some of those deep clear lakes over there and it's a very effective technique for catching a lot of crappie in the late spring through the summer and through the fall. It's called spider rigging. On today's show, I'm gonna show you the equipment and that technique, or at least a form of it. What we'll be doing is not the traditional spider rigging, but it's very similar to it. And it will work on lakes all around our Southwest region. To do that, I'd like to welcome you into Lake Proctor. It's a pretty small lake located in Northwest Texas, a little bit west of the city of Dublin, Texas. It's a good crappie lake and a good test tube for us to use to demonstrate this technique. And while I'm doing that, we're taking you around the region for this week's fishing reports from Louisiana, Oklahoma, Texas freshwater, the saltwater report along the Gulf Coast. We'll also have the Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week, the Costa Big Catch of the Week, show off some of your big fish photos, the Ask the Pro, and much more. But first, we take you back to the FSN studios. Here is Julie with this week's Weekend Plan. Let's get you set with all the information you'll need to plan your weekend fishing trip. According to the Salooner tables, this will not be one of the best weekends of the month for fishing. Fair conditions are predicted for Saturday, with peak times beginning at 3.50 in the afternoon. And Sunday is listed as 4, with the best activity starting at 4.20 a.m. Expect sunrise to take place at 6.22, with sunset happening at 8.27. And we'll have a crescent moon 28% illuminated in the evening. We'll be right back with all of the current fishing reports from around the Southwest. And Wally Marshall will join me for this week's Whataburger Ask the Pro Feature. Stay with us. The Southwest Outdoors Report is brought to you by Tracker Boats, Fish the Finest, by Lowrance, and the all new HDS Gym 2, with Structure Map Overview, by Strand Fishing Lines, the standard of dependability, by Costa Sunglasses, see what's out there and by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. Welcome back everybody and let's begin by explaining what a spider rig for crappie fishing actually is. Now a true spider rig like they use in the southeast has specialized rod holders that hold four rods each so they'll put eight rods up front, eight rods in the back for a total of 16 different rods. And I've actually got something on here. What in the world? That's a white bass. I didn't mean to do that. I was trying to explain all this and a white bass ran up there and grabbed it. But we'll go ahead and finish up our explanation here. So what I've done is I have rigged six rods on my nitro bass boat. That's a white bass. That's a trash fish today, by the way. So we've got a rod holder in the back and these are Atwood adjustable rod holders. I'll show them to you close up on the Academy Wright stuff. Put one in the back, two up here on the front, and then I've done the same on the other side for a total of six rods. And what we'll do is use these to cover a lot of water. We can cover a 30 foot wide spread very evenly and locate where the crappie are, at what depth they are, and what color and bait they're biting. And I'll explain how that works a little bit later on in the show. But we've got ourselves rigged up. We're gonna go look for crappie today on Lake Proctor. Let's get out there and try it. But right now, we're checking in with Cajun Phil and Kevin in Louisiana. Hi friends, Cajun Phil here with your Fox Louisiana Fishing Report. Where do I start? I tell you what, fishing right now is good just about everywhere. Let's talk with Toledo Ben though. I talked to Joe Jocelyn. Joe says Cajun right now in Toledo Bend, we're catching lots of bass. They're pretty deep though. He's catching them at 15 to 8 foot of water, either drop shotting or Carolina rigging bass assassin plastics. Up at Caddo Lake, they're catching them under the lily pads. The reason why the sun's coming down, it's getting hot, bass are under that cover. They're throwing frogs. They're also throwing light weighted plastic lizards. They're throwing them really slow, pulling them across the lily pads, letting them fall in all the little cracks and crevices, 
they're catching some pretty good bass right now up at Lake Caddo. As far as the salt water action goes, I tell you what, I don't even know where to begin. Let's start with, let's start with Venice, Louisiana. Offshore is great. They're catching tuna, amberjack, wahoo. Inshore, right now in Venice, Louisiana, you want to go catch giant redfish. I'm talking about 30, 35 pounders. Put on some top water lures. You better get you some 50 or 60 pound fins brave because it's going to take that with these giant redfish that's right offshore now in Venice, Louisiana. Up around Hopedale, Delacroix, they catch you lots of speckled trout on live shrimp under the popping cart. Lots of redfish on spoons and spinnerbaits. Until next time, this is Cajun Phil for Captain Kevin said. Happy fishing and may God bless it. I tell you what, friends, we go see you right here at Fox Sports Southwest next week. Here's a bite. Look at this. Look at this. Got him. All right. We've got something. Oh, nice crappie right there. Coming up out of fairly deep water. All right. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Your SOR talking about spider rigging today. And uh, we're on Lake Proctor, and that's just a good size crappie right there. Already spawned out. We're going to let them go back. I'm not keeping crappie today, but I want to show you something. Let's uh, kind of pan over on this side where you can see my rods. A couple of things about this technique. We've got these rod holders in here, and I've got two different lengths of rods. Uh, I've got one Wally Marshall reel and this big 14 foot long Wally Marshall rod. I've got the longer one extended out on the back and then I've got a shorter rod. This is an 11 foot Mr. Crappie rod, yellow color, and I've got it up on the front rod holder. So what, what you can do is you can stagger these rods out around the boat where you can cover a big wide swath. I can cover 30 feet of bottom as I slowly drift along here. Another thing I can do, I can try different depths. This one's down on the bottom. This one's about three feet off the bottom. I can vary and stagger the depths and see what depth the crappie are holding at. And the last thing I can do is try different colors. Now that one hit on a, a, a Bobby Garland slab slayer crappie jig and it was a, a blue and white color. So we can try different colors and if they're liking one color on a particular day, you can change the rest of them out to that same color. So it's a great method, a great technique for experimenting around with different depths, different baits, different colors. All right, got a spread working here. It's gonna work. Nice crappie to get it going. Let's check in right now with Brian Hughes, your Texas weekly fishing reports. For the Hi everybody, and welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you by A1 Locksmiths, where their experts can help you pick out the right gun safe for your needs. Plus, they have free delivery options for Lone Star Lakes viewers. Now, it's a holiday weekend. There is going to be a lot of recreational boat traffic on many of our lakes. Texoma, Louisville, Athens, you name it, there's probably going to be a lot of jet skis and skiers out there that will kind of interfere with your fishing. So why not go to a lake like little Lake Aquila down by Whitney? It's only about a thousand acres. It's got some great bass fishing right now. If you'll fish up shallow with topwaters to start your day, then move to a Cinco, and then finally, a Texas rig worm. Fish around the lay down timbers and the little channels in the timber, and you should catch a lot of fish on Aquila this weekend. That's Lone Star Lakes, brought to you by A1 Locksmiths. Remember, click on my picture on the webpage for more Texas fishing information. Let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson. He's on the coast. Hi folks, this week's report is brought to you by Port Aransas on Mustang Island the fishing capital of Texas, where anglers enjoy pristine bays, estuaries, 18 miles of surf, and the deep blue waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Plus, the local restaurants will even cook your catch come sundown. Come fish and play Texas Island style. For more information, visit the website on the screen. Well, the first long weekend of summer is upon us, and that means we'll have plenty of company along the Texas coast this Memorial Day weekend. Recent light wind days and an influx of bait have had trout and redfish working under birds on Sabine and Galveston Bays. If the winds remain light to moderate, then try the surf or jetties. Around the nearshore rigs offshore, good catches of red snapper, kingfish, ling, and dorado have come from rigs in state waters out to nine nautical miles out of Port Aransas and Port O'Connor. 
While offshore, also keep an eye peel for weed lines as well as rips. On the mid coast, catch your trout from the boat in the first or second gut, then tie on a titanium leader and go after kingfish. On days when the winds have blown, Estes Flats have been good for specks on topwater lures. The lower Laguna Madre continues to sizzle with fish on Long Bar, the potholes southeast of Long Bar, as well as on Mexiquita Flats and in South Bay. Don't forget the summer long CCA Star Tournament begins this Saturday and runs through Labor Day Monday. This weekend, both Saturday and Sunday have a single tide schedule, a one high and one low tide each day. I'm Bill Olson, and I'll see you on the coast. Got him. All right, what is it? Oh, it's a little crappie and he hooked in the tail, but I was getting a bite on this other one too. Got him. All right. Oh, that's a nice crappie right there. If we were keeping them, that would be a keeper. All right, well, we're gonna take a quick break for word from our sponsors. Spider rigging today takes a little time, little effort, a little expense to get this thing rigged up, but it can pay big dividends. And let me mention too, you can also do this for white bass, catfish, stripers, hybrids, lots of fish. You can catch a bunch of them very efficiently with the spider rig. Hey, before we go to the break, I'm gonna throw that one back and mention to you that time is running out for you to register to fish with our Oklahoma Insider Reporter on our sweepstakes going on on our Facebook page right now. Go to facebook.com slash Southwest Outdoors Report. You need to click the like button in the top right corner if you haven't done that already, and then you can register to enter our sweepstakes. The winner gets to fish with a guest for a day in Oklahoma at one of Oklahoma's hottest bass fishing lakes with our on-camera reporter, Gary Dallahan, and the second prize winner wins an Onyx Outdoors rain suit, high-quality rain suit from one of our sponsors. Stay with us, we'll be right back. The Southwest Outdoors Report is brought to you by Mercury, the official outboard of the Southwest Outdoors Report for 10 years running. By XI, start positive, stay positive. By Lose Reels and Rods, feel the difference. By Whataburger, proud to serve it, hot and fresh, 24 hours a day. And by Onyx Personal Flotation Devices and Rainwear, keeping you safe on the water. One, there's one, there's one. Got him. Ooh, that's a better pull. Look at that crappie. Good crappie. Ooh, I pulled him up out of kind of deep water. All right. Oh, swing him aboard. Man, <laughs> that's, the, that's the first crappie I've ever caught on a 14 foot long rod. In fact, I want you to look at this. This is a huge rod. Pan that camera up to the very tip of this rod. Look how far up there that rod is. I am out here fishing with a 14 foot long fishing rod unbelievable and I have caught a good crappie look at that man that's a slab right there that's what we came out here to do too bad we're not keeping them today or that one would fillet up plenty plenty nice hey welcome back everybody your SOR is uh, at Lake Proctor today and we're talking about spider rig fishing I've got six rods set out on Atwood rod holders and uh, not keeping them today so that one's gonna go back See you, Padre. I appreciate that, though. That was a lot of fun on that big, long rod. Let's, uh, let me give you the next tip on spider rig fishing, and that is movement and control. You do need to keep moving when you've got these rods out and got them at the correct depths. You've got to keep the boat at a slow, steady pace. You've got to have a good trolling motor. So I've got my Motor Guide Digital Tour Edition 109-pound thrust motor on this big nitro bass boat, but you do... Uh, need a good quality trolling motor don't bring an old broke down unreliable motor out here because you've got to keep the bow of the boat into the wind and then you've got to keep the boat moving at a steady pace because if you get to spinning around and moving too fast six rods out you're going to get them all crossed you will wind up with a gigantic mess so movement under control is the key to sweeping a big path with all six of these rods and covering a lot of ground and you cannot do this in brush and trees and all kinds of cover. You'll stay snagged all day long. Here's Gary Dallahan up in Oklahoma. 
Hey, on last week's program, Barry showed you how to catch catfish on Texas waters right now as those fish are coming in to spawn. You can do that same thing here in Oklahoma. The catfish reports coming in from all across the state are really good from small waters to big waters. Now, back on May 7th, Larry Newton from Oklahoma City caught a new lake record channel cat at Lake Overholster near the city, 26 pounds. He caught it using a slip cork like Barry was doing, but baited with punch bait underneath it. Then on May 9th, up at Call Lake, James Grace from Call City caught a new lake record blue cat at 66.5 pounds. He was using natural bait. Now Memorial Day weekend kicks off the official start to the summer vacation season. Some of you might be getting your boats out for the very first time. If that's the case, you may need a refresher on your boat safety requirements. To help with that, if you'll go to my insider report at southwestoutdoorsreport.com, I've put a link up there that takes you to a video interview I did with Trooper Larry Norman a while back where he talks about safety requirements for your boats for the state of Oklahoma. That might be very helpful to you. Also, while you're on the website this weekend, be sure that you're signed up for the fishing trip opportunity with me here in Oklahoma. We're gonna to go to one of our lakes. We're gonna have a fun day on the water, catch a lot of fish. You're gonna do the Oklahoma Fishing Report for that week. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. One thing about it, you can't catch them if you don't go. A few weeks ago here on the show, we showed you some really good walleye fishing at Broken Bow Lake, Southeast Oklahoma. And on this week's Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week, we're going to go back and show you where on the lake the walleye are located. And to help us do that, we're gonna to go to the Lawrence HDS-10, the big widescreen high-res unit, the new Gen 2 unit that's got the faster processor in it. And we're gonna locate the lake north of Broken Bow, Oklahoma. We zoom in to locate the small dam on the south end here. And now everywhere we mark in the hatched red is where we caught walleye. And you can see that we caught them pretty much all over the lower end of the lake. On cloudy days, they scatter along the rocky shorelines, and on sunny days, they school up around the ends of Rock Point. There is a legitimate catchable population of walleye now existing in Broken Bow Lake. Go up, plan a weekend trip, and have a blast catching walleye. That's this week's Lawrence Hot Lake. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll have the Ask the Pro the Academy Right Stuff feature show you the gear you'll need to do your own spider rigging for crappie, and someone wins free Costa sunglasses on the Costa Catch of the Week. The Southwest Outdoors Report is brought to you by Nitro Performance Bass Boats. Fish your best in a nitro. By Gene LaRue and Bobby Garland Lures. Quality soft plastic baits made in Oklahoma with American pride. By Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff, low price, every day. And by Motor Guide Trolling Motors, engineering for angling. Welcome back everyone, it's time for our Whataburger Ask the Pro. This week's question is from Kyle in Paris, Texas who wants to know, when do crappie move to deep water? For the answer, let's check with the man they call Mr. Crappie, Wally Marshall. Most of the time here in Texas, especially around the middle of May, our crappie spawn is over. And so what's gonna happen is a lot of the crappies are starting to start moving out into the deeper waters, especially when the water temperature reaches about 80 to 85 degrees, they will start moving a little bit further out. And those fry, you can actually see around those trees anywhere to 10 to 15 to 20 foot of water and somewhere submerged up, up and down on that vertical structure, there will be those crappie underneath that fit on the crappie fry. Thanks, Wally. If you have a question for one of the pros, just visit our website at southwestoutdoorsreport.com, follow the Ask the Pro link, and send us your information. Now back to Barry with our Costa Catch of the Week. Congratulations to this week's Costa Catch of the Week winner. He is Gary McMahon of Hackberry, Louisiana. Gary is shown here with his 29 inch, nine pound speckled trout. What a specimen. And he caught it at Lake Calcasieu down in South Louisiana, Cajun Phil and Kevin territory. Gary wins a brand new pair of his choice of Costa sunglasses. And the Costa frame of the month this month is Jose, which comes in two frame colors and five lens colors in both polycarbonate and 580 glass. You can see all of the Costa sunglasses at the website at costadelmar.com. 
Next up, it's the Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff feature to show you the right gear if you want to go spider rigging for crappie or other game fish. And it begins with one of these Atwood Pro Style Rod Holders. Now, they make a lot of rod holders out on the market. I've tried some inferior ones. It's not worth your time and effort. Go for the Atwoods, and you can see them on the front page of our website. I have those up as the featured gear of the week. Now we used several rods on today's show, but I want to show you just one of those. This is the Lose Wally Marshall Signature Series Crappie Rod. It's 11 feet long, perfect for spider rigging, and it's rigged with a little Wally Marshall Signature Series reel that matches it. And the bait that we used, you see it right there on the right-hand side of the screen. That's a Bobby Garland Slab Slayer, and they really wanted this white with the blue body today. That's a two-inch size. I will confess to you that today was my first ever attempt at spider rigging, and not the true spider rigging like they do over in the southeast with 16 rods scattered around the boat. But I can promise you this, with six rod holders and six rods, if you get into the fish, those six will keep you hopping. And don't forget, you can use this technique not only for crappie, but for white bass, stripers, hybrids, even catfish. No telling what you can catch at your favorite lake. I'll be trying this again for several different species at other lakes in our region. Thanks for joining us today from Lake Proctor in Northwest Texas. Until next week, I'm Barry Stokes saying be safe, have fun. Bye bye guys.